Oh, he definitely smells it. Oh, oh, he got it. He definitely got it. That is, that's great. Okay, so uh, there's a lot of things I want to get to in this video, pretty much involving the two outdoor ponds, and more specifically, the larger of the two ponds, this one right here. And obviously, I did get a new catfish for it last week, and I'm going to get to that here in just a second. Uh, it was nighttime when I got the catfish, so that's why I didn't make a video that same day that I got it, but I did get some footage of it. But here is the big 800-gallon pond. As you can see, I filled it back up. Now, we're probably sitting right around 800 gallons again. It probably dropped down to around 650 or so. Uh, but I got in here yesterday and uh, made that second rock cave that I was talking about pretty much identical to the one over there. And I moved uh, the piece of driftwood right there. Uh, it didn't really spook the fish all that much. In fact, the bullhead catfish decided he wanted to bite me twice on my big toe. Definitely was not expecting that. I was I picked that driftwood up and he was under, up underneath there and he just started biting me. So I don't know what that was about. But there's the big peacock right there. Or his mouth down there. And you can probably tell I'm starting to get some algae back in this pond. Kind of the same deal that happened when I first set the pond up. I said it would go away and it did. And uh, I'm not going to do much to this right here. Uh, in fact, I'm fixing to move a pleco in here and he's going to help out with this. But if you look right down there, you can see the new catfish. This guy's probably about 10, 11 inches or so. He's really, really hard to see. But it is a red-tailed tiger shovel nose hybrid. Uh, someone who actually watches my channel brought him into the store they've been raising him up and they wanted me to have him so I took him but this is probably going to be the last fish that I add to that pond besides the fish I have right now that are about to go in there at least for the next four or five months I probably I don't plan to add any fish in there until it starts to warm back up in the springtime even though this pond's going to be heated I don't want to put a fish that's been used to a consistent temperature in an inside tank and throw it out here into a fluctuating temperature every day. That's gonna really stress it out, and uh, I don't wanna do that, like I said, at least while it's cold. But last week, we actually had a cold front come through right around the time that I added that catfish in there, so I was a little worried, but he handled it just fine. I actually just got a meeting yesterday, but we had been getting up in the upper 80s during the daytime, dropping down the mid 60s, and the pond had been maxing out at like 84 degrees every day. And obviously, I've got one 1200 watt heater on here right now, and I had it set to 84 degrees, and like I said, the pond would max out at 84 every day. It would drop down a few degrees a night, and then come back up during the daytime. So, for three or four days last week, the high during the day was only like mid-70s, and the lows were dropping like the mid and lower 50s. I think one night it might, might actually hit 49 degrees outside. So, obviously, the pond temp, even if it did not have the heater in there, it would have never hit 49 degrees. It would have to stay at that temperature for an extended amount of time. Could it have dropped out of a tropical range though, yeah, uh, but probably not long enough to harm the fish. But how the heater held up is what I was really concerned about and what I really wanted to see. Not really concerned, but I wanted to see how it would handle that cooler weather with one 1200 watt heater. Now keep in mind the pond was lower. It probably did not have anywhere close to 800 gallons, probably around 650. Now it's back to 800 though. But still, one 1200 watt heater for 650 gallons, that's definitely underheated, if that makes any sense. But it actually handled it really, really well. So the pond actually, uh, I think the lowest it ever got was like 74, 73 or something like that. Now keep in mind, I'd been having the heater set to 84 and I cranked it up to like 92, okay? I, le I know I at least cranked it up to 88 one night and then I think I brought it up to 92 that next night. But the lowest it ever got was like 74, and I think it was still getting up to like 78 degrees during the daytime. So it handled it pretty darn well. And now, obviously, it's back to how it was before. You can see I've got the heater right now. I'll turn this little module around. We got it set to 85. This is the heater set temp. This is the pond temperature, so 80 degrees. Uh, yesterday, I think it maxed out at like 81 and it'll probably do the same thing today. Now, I did say in a previous video a few weeks ago that around the beginning of October, I would add the second heater to the pond, and I plan on doing that sometime later on this week. I'll set the heater to whatever it needs to be set to, but I just want to go ahead and put the second one on there. I plan to have three total, a fourth one going on this pond, even though none of these fish are going to need it, but just kind of as a backup heater in, in case, like on the really cold nights, that this pond needs it. So three 1,200-watt heaters on the big pond and then one on the 300 gallon pond and I know I said I was gonna wait till the end of October early part of November to move the two marble char catfish into Pleco into there but next week I'm planning on adding that one right there that's the larger one of the two uh, reason being he's clearly big enough to go ahead and go in there right now but the smaller one does not get quite as much food as this guy does this one's blind actually uh, and is definitely the more dominant one when it comes to feeding so by getting him out of here 
uh, and really focusing on the smaller one for the next two to three weeks, I can really try to push a little more growth uh, to the smaller one, and uh, that way they can both be in that pond. Now the Pleco is uh, actually smaller than both of them, but I'm not worried about that guy. Uh, he's hanging out down there, and he's going to be real hard to see, but uh, I can honestly go ahead and move him right now if I wanted to. I could probably move all three of these fish, but I just want to get that smaller one a little bit bigger. Not, not so much because I think that these fish might pick on him, but more so because I think he might be undersized for a while in this pond if I move him at the same time. Because like I said, he's just not, he's not as dominant when it comes to feeding uh, as that larger one is. And you can see he pretty much stays out in the daytime. And actually the pond's still a little bit hazy from yesterday. This is not as clear as it will get probably by the end of the day today. There's the Oscars. He decided to come out, but uh, still a little bit hazy from where I got in here and was moving everything around yesterday. So you guys see me feed krill a lot of the times, but this is another good frozen food that I like, and it's actually a frozen food that the big peacock will eat. Uh, the krill and stuff like that, he will not eat that frozen. Pretty much this and live food is the only thing I've been able to get that big peacock to eat, uh, but he absolutely loves these. These are frozen silver sides. Um, and these really fill them up a lot better than the krill does, so we're going to feed them real quick. Now the largemouth is obviously going to get the first one, no doubt about that, but the peacock's going to gonna challenge him. Watch this. Oh, he got it. Peacock that, got that one. Got to give the Oscar a little piece. There you go. Now I just will kind of cut them in half and uh, throw them in there, just kind of let them get their own amount. And it's going to be really hard for you guys to see, but I'm going to drop a piece down here and see if this hybrid will eat. I got him to eat a piece yesterday, but uh, let's see if he does today. Oh, he definitely smells it. Oh, oh, he got it. He definitely got it. That is, that's great. So after I feed those guys, I'll come over here and drop a few pieces in here. And uh, you see how aggressive that guy is when it comes to the feeding. Now the other one will come out, but he just doesn't really challenge that big one as much as he should. And that's why I want to go ahead and move him out of here. Turtle's going to be mad if I don't give him one piece. Got it. I'll give this guy one. And they, they just keep coming too. There's four of them in here now. All right, I think the smaller one is right here, so I'm gonna try to drop some down here and uh, see if he gets it. Let's see. Oh, there he is. He got it. But you see how he just kind of stays there? And he's gonna get that other piece, but he's just not as food aggressive as that larger one is. That's gonna pretty much do it for now though, guys. If you guys did enjoy the video, please be sure to give it a like down below. Hit the subscribe button if you guys are new to the channel. A lot of new things coming up with this pond. Uh, a lot of factors I'm going to have to factor in with uh, the heating situation. And, I know, and I'm going to talk more about this in more detail as it gets colder. Right now it's still really warm outside. I could take this other heater off the pond and wouldn't even need one right now. I just want to kind of go ahead and, you know, get prepared for this because this is my first year heating this size of a pond. So I don't really know what's going to happen until it does start to get colder and colder. Just want to be prepared. But one thing that I might do on the really, really cold nights, and this will be months down the road, but I will probably have something to cover this pond at night because obviously heat rises cold air sinks. So that's going to help trap in more of that heat um, on those really, really cold nights. And uh, that honestly could be a game changer. So we'll see what happens if you guys have any suggestions or if you're kind of in the same boat that I am with this pond heating situation uh, and you have more questions, you can leave them down below or you can message me on Instagram at fishing underscore PF and um, I will try my best to respond back to you. So thank you guys for watching as always. And with that being said, I'll catch you guys in the next video. Peace.